Okay. You've got a friend in me. You got a friend in me. When the road looks rough ahead. And you're miles and miles from your nice warm bed. You just remember what your old pal said. Yeah, you got a friend in me. Yeah, you got a friend in me. <laughs> Welcome. <laughs> oh my gosh, I fucking love us. We're amazing. <laughs> <laughs> it's so fit. The song is actually so fitting. Do you want to like um do what we normally do and just introduce? Oh, yeah. Yeah, we, we can do, do that. Yep. Hi, 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 hi. Welcome, welcome to the Conscious Catalyst podcast with Maddie and me, Nicole. Welcome to this episode, guys. We are so freaking excited for this episode because it's it's a big one. It it's going to be one. deep. It's going to be rough. It's going to be, it's going to crack us wide open. Um, we're getting into quite a topic here. And me, Maddie and I actually had a conversation before this saying that we cannot it's not possible to say everything that we want to say in this one yeah. episode. So we're going to just go with the flow, see what's coming through us, which generally like Maddie and I set intentions with these podcasts as well, that what comes through us is what's needed. So we've got ideas, we've got things that we want to say, but we know that what comes through us on the podcast and what we say is what you guys need to hear. Yeah. So Maddie, do you want to, do you want to tell us what we're talking about today? So today and I'm, i might even probably miss things that you might have to pinpoint back up again but basically the overall the title thing give us the title is is mental health um and sort of how that wraps up in uh, spirituality and um just also everyday life um mm -hmm. yeah mental health it's a big conversation that can it branches into so many different ways but um yeah we just want to have the conversation open the conversation um and we'll see where it goes. <laughs> yeah, I think that's right. Yeah, we just want to open the conversation and, and keep that door open. Like Maddie said on the first episode that this is a space for us to come and let it all hang out. And it's a space for us to connect on a deep soul level. Um, and we just want this to be a place where we're connecting with each other, where we're saying things that hopefully resonate with our listeners. Mm -hmm. And that there's an open space for you guys to come speak to us as well. Yeah. So that's what the, that's the doorway. And on that note as well, we just want to also mention how freaking grateful, like just so many good vibes, so much gratefulness running all the way from my mm. body to my tips of my toes for the listeners currently. And we've had such fucking incredible yeah. feedback and it's literally just been so heartwarming the different types of people that are listening the people that are commenting and saying hey I love your podcast like um the people that are sharing and tagging us and telling us their stories about the previous episode which yeah. was all about intuition and and yeah. really engaging with us that's what we love like we're so here for that and we just want to say thank you thank you for listening thank you for being here and being part mm -hmm. of this community so and you know with we, we needed to have this episode mental health out there in one of the first episodes we do so that we create the space of connection yeah. and and openness between us and you guys as well I love that yeah and also obviously too um in these podcasts we ourselves can't expect um you guys to um share in vulnerability unless we are doing so ourselves as well mm. um and both Nicole and I have had very sort of um differing experiences in within this whole topic and this this whole conversation so um yeah we thank you for just being here and thank you for hearing us in our own experiences and our own vulnerabilities and um we hope that you are able to um, basically take that on and um, use it as an excuse to lean into your own vulnerabilities as well and again this mm -hmm. is our little safe space um, but yeah and just <clears throat> warning about triggers as well like this could be very triggering we are going to yeah. get into some personal things and we are going to get into um, different things around the mental health um, it's a massive umbrella so there's going to be lots of tangents that we're going on so we just want to warn people that there is also um trigger warning for miscarriage in this mm. episode so if if that's going to 
trigger you in any way, we either recommend you to come back to this episode mm-hmm. when you are in a safe place, when you feel mm-hmm. comfortable, like maybe not listening on your way to work or in your lunch break, because this, yeah. this could be quite a triggering episode. Mm-hmm. Um, and then a whole lot of other things, um, anxiety, depression, we are going to be touching on a lot of those things. Mm-hmm. And yeah, just make sure you're in a place that you feel comfortable, you feel safe, you feel yeah. Yeah. like if you do get triggered, that you're in a place where you can walk yourself through that trigger and walk yourself through that experience. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, I think, I think we've said all we need to say, so we yeah. can just dive in the right on in (laughs) here we go buckle (laughs) Buckle up people this is it's it's you know what maddie and i said on in the beginning of this episode as well like we are the types of people that we're going to ride the whole way we're going to go deep we're going to laugh at ourselves we're going to laugh at our experiences i mean one of one of the things that i love about maddie is she's got this um uh I call it, I think, I think I'd call it a practice, um, but she actually had a whole brand built around it, which is called laughing through the lessons. <laughs> yes. um, and one of my favorite things that she was doing and she's still doing it, but is literally dancing hysterically. It's fucking amazing. But through the blues and like mm. every, every week she would post a, a video on TikTok and Instagram of her just dancing away the blues. And it's so refreshing to see Mm. that and even though that those emotions are still there there's like practices that you can do and it Mm. wasn't less about dancing through them and and movement well that was a piece of it but I feel like it was about that community building of going like I'm going through this you're going through this Mm. but we can do it together like we were going through the same things and it's also like um it's also like (laughs) for me I felt like it was just creating little pockets of joy so it's like you can you can sit with the fact that you maybe are feeling some type of way or you've got something going on but it's just reminding yourself that even through that you can create little pockets of joy Mm -hmm. you can create little moments of of peace and it 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 doesn't I guess what I want to say is like although it doesn't like you said it doesn't necessarily like fully remove the blues off your shoulder but Mm -hmm. it it really just gives a time for you to give yourself a break like you know just that constant (laughs) overwhelm um we need to find little pockets of joy and little moments of peace and balance so that yeah it just just is a little bit of a a smoother ride and exactly Mm -hmm. like you said helping others to see that this is for a lot of us a shared human experience that the depression and anxiety and and the way that we navigate you know grief and loss and a whole heap of other stuff it's it might look individually very different but we all have some experience of it Mm -hmm. either personally or we know people that are moving through these sorts of things so yeah Yeah. I, I, I definitely I don't really do the dance once a day on the thing anymore but it's still something I incorporate movement in some type and we'll go into all of yeah, this but practices um, and stuff yeah, yeah I I definitely recommend that like <laughs> going out and shaking your damn booty like just go out and do it regardless Move of like body. how how it's going to be perceived by anyone you're doing it for you because it feels good to shake that shit off you know just mm-hmm. even if it's for 10 fucking minutes five minutes I think that needs minute. to be the new hashtag like shake that shit off shake that shit <laughs> off <laughs> release I'm not wearing a bra so if I go to <laughs> welcome youtube (laughs) well they they don't know what they sign up for yet (laughs) Um, well they do now (laughs) um okay well let's get into some of the things that we were discussing about uh, what we wanted to talk about going through this now we want to preempt this with these two different lenses here that we're talking through on the podcast um I'm coming from a lens of a support person. Um, I've only, as far as I can remember, um, yes. I've only had one depressive episode, which was the most recent one was between about like October, November last year, mm-hmm. all the way through to probably about May this year. Um, yeah. That sounds like a lot longer than I was. I feel like it was about four months. Mm. So it was probably a bit quicker, but that it, I, I went through this this phase of um, <clears throat> essentially feeling low, yeah. and then I would be like, 
uh, three days would go by and I'd feel better. And I'd be like, cool, yeah. I'm out of it, which is, that's my normal pattern. I'd like three days max of feeling like low. Yeah. Um, and then I'd be fine. And then uh, this time round, it would be like three days and then I'd have like a little spike of joy. Yeah. And then I'd have another three or four days of low. And I'd be like, this is weird. This doesn't normally happen to me. Mm. So I was like very much an observer of like, huh, this is interesting. Normally it's like, it clears itself away and it, it disappears. Yeah. But then it just kept repeating itself and I'd have like a little good day. But then for like four months, I'd have really lows and I'd be like, what the hell is going on here? Like, yeah. I'm not this person. I normally feel good 99% of the time. And yeah. I have little, little pockets of sad and little pockets of frustration. Mm. And um, so if you're getting that from a lens of like, now I've experienced it once. Yeah. Um, that I can remember. That's the the most recent one. I can't remember ever having a depressive episode before that. I haven't mm. experienced anxiety. Um, I, so I don't have any of those kinds of experiences, but what I do have is um, essentially I used to be the love and light person. Yeah. I still very much am, but yeah. from back in the past, it was very much this uneducated, unexperienced way yeah. So let's say 10 more, 10 or plus years ago. Yeah. And then I met my husband who experiences mental health issues like depression yeah. and anxiety. And I very, very quickly realized that you can't just say to people, well, yeah. you just think positive. Mm. Just like sprinkle that, some little love yeah, and light fairy just, dust. You just change your mindset and that's all yeah. you do. And you just, you just yeah. do it. And it didn't quite, I couldn't grasp the concept when I was like, but what do you mean you're anxious all the time? Or what do you mean mm. you're depressed? Or what do you mean like you're having panic attacks and all these kinds of things? Like I could not grasp it. So I, I did the support thing that I thought, okay, I need to understand this. Yeah. And I researched the shit out of it and I read blogs. As you read- do best, <laughs> as you do best. I do research the <laughs> shit out of things, right? Um, and I did, and I read blogs and I read um, like Reddit um, freaking um, yeah. threads of like real people experiences. And then I actually send articles to Dren. I'm like, is this how you feel? Yeah. Is this how you feel? So I could understand it from all angles and go, okay, I get it now. Mm. And I get the concept. I get the, like what people are facing um, and how to help people as well. Mm. And that's, so that's been my position. So now I, I've got so many people in my life. I mean, it's really quite scary how many yeah. people in your circle whether you know it or not either have depression or anxiety or both or panic attacks or Mm. real emotional traumas that no one knows about so Mm. if you are a person that has that is listening to this episode having not felt depression before or anxiety or you're like you just think positive that's what you do yeah I guarantee you, you need to be the support person and you need to be like me and research the shit out of this because Mm. I guarantee you there's someone, at least one person, probably more in your circle that is experiencing this. And if you don't understand it and you just tell them to think positive, that's not supportive. Yeah. Yeah. So now we'll talk about, Maddie is going to talk about her experience because she's coming from the the other angle. The (laughs) angle. Lens and angle. That's that's what my brain did. I love it. It was like just mix them together. Everyone will know it. Um. Yeah. So on on the very opposite side of that, I feel like I've been a sad bitch most of my life, and not because. Mm -hmm. Um. And and again, I'm very cautious about my wording because it's still something that I navigate all the time. Um. And I am someone who has been. Uh, medicated Um, I've been on antidepressants Um, I have been to some counseling sessions and it's a whole nother conversation for Mm. another day the inaccessibility Mm. to these spaces Um, and um, I feel like mine can be quite seasonal Um, and again we'll talk a little bit more about what when we say seasonal and and these sorts of things but um, and then again, I feel like there are there have been lots where it has mainly been linked into where I'm at within my like spiritual growth or like mm-hmm. my spiritual sort of journey and where that's taken me. And and sometimes with expansion of new understanding, you have to go to new depths to really oh, yeah. integrate that. And um, yeah, honestly, it is one of those things where, um, and in fact, it is quite similar. Um, 
to exactly the experience that you've had where it's like sometimes I go why <laughs> like <laughs> what the fuck you know like, like I don't even understand it yeah yeah and I, I'll have I'll have days see mine instead of sort of like three days it can be really irrational where and I know that lots of people will resonate with this you start to think like am I am I fucking crazy or like do I need to actually go and get further like support or like um, mm. not just maybe so much with the holistic side of things but actually going to a, a, a doctor and being like fuck like do, do I need something else here what what's going on um mm. and it can be very very conflicting and it can be very um painful and confusing um and yeah I feel like I I have been to I like to say like the depths of hell like my brain mm -hmm. has taken me places and in complete um open openness right now again with um having ADHD I also have um what are they called um like rant like thoughts like just lots of uh, intrusive intrusive thoughts, thoughts. so yeah. like um I wouldn't be surprised like again I will just share this open-heartedly um but you know I'm the sort of person that I'll be driving down the road and I'm like oh I wonder what it'd be like to just crash into that fence or I wonder what it'd be like to like crash Go into that yeah. no no <laughs> but, but yeah, it, 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 I, it, I know it, what it you're is, talking yeah. about yeah. yeah and it's not that um I'm <clears> actually in in that but that's just that just seems to be how it's an my, intrusive thought. my brain yeah. is yeah and um, again, we'll talk about it as we go along, but a lot of the time, my depression is the key to understanding what I need in my life or what I'm mm. I, I'm not doing in my life that can be taking the best care of myself. And um, yeah, just personally for me, and it's like what we've said as well, that your other people that are listening to this, you know, like your your experience you might have similarities but yours will be different and how it presents itself and whether yours is a chemical imbalancement or whether it's something that is um trauma related or mm -hmm. um you know but again it's just we needed to have this conversation and especially because right now um obviously we're going through like the cost of living crisis and we've got how you know mm -hmm. housing things and um it's actually really fucking tough out there for a lot of people right now. Um, mm -hmm. And even if you're not someone who mainly typically suffers from anxiety and depression, I'm noticing that even those people are are feeling um, some sort of pressure kicking in now. Um, mm -hmm. And it's just important that we open up these conversations because um, yeah, we aren't alone. We're never alone, but mm. depression and anxiety can make you feel extremely alone. alone yeah so yeah that's I think of where that's I, I think from. that's definitely where we need to um, deviate this conversation or, or rather go down that path of the feeling mm. of alone and and opening up that conversation so one of the things that I feel is mo the most important thing is being able to communicate how you're feeling now this is yeah. so difficult when like we've both experienced when we're like I don't even understand what I'm feeling I don't understand it. How am I supposed to communicate it? Yeah. I don't know what what it feels like or even why I'm feeling like this. So if I can't articulate those two things, how am I supposed to tell someone else that I need help? Because I don't yeah. know what help I need. I don't know how to ask for help. I don't know all these things. So that's that's probably your first step is fi like finding solutions to how do I communicate what I'm feeling yeah. and then and and it does you don't have to know why because of often that's probably one of the most dif difficult things Absolutely. why am i feeling yeah. this no fucking clue it could mm. come out of no it could come it be a trigger from trauma that you don't even mm. remember it yep. could be something that's triggering you like money relationships yeah kids uh, environmental future, things, environmental yeah. things it could be anything that's triggering you and putting you into this mood into this state of being that you go I don't know how I got you but it's all subconscious mm -hmm. and for you to try and say this is what I'm feeling and and why I'm feeling it we have no clue yeah so so how then do we communicate it um and essentially what I Again, I'm the research person. I, I study the shit out of all of this kind of stuff. And <laughs> one of my favorite things is um, what Brene Brown talks about, which is I naming love her. emotion. I fucking love her. 
She's I have a- her book actually. If you got, if uh, just you? as we as we're talking about this, it's Atlas of the Heart. Oh, I don't know whether that was the one. Yes, and that's that, the one. Yeah. Yeah. So I have that, and it, <clears> I, <throat> I cannot recommend it enough in terms of exactly what um yeah Nicole is just naming about to the emotion speak about naming them because there's so many emotions that we label and it's actually not even the right emotion mm. to, to label it with and you don't it's an incredible book go and find it if you can yes we Absolutely. can link it in the in the show notes as well oh, beautiful to make it easier um just remind me to do that hashtag okay. ADHD. <laughs> <laughs> but we will do that for you and if we don't text us tag us say hey where yeah. that, where's that book um and yeah. we'll t- we'll send you a link to somewhere but Absolutely. essentially what maddie's saying is correct is that we don't have to we not only because we do often people do label their emotions but they label them wrong so a lot mm-hmm. of times people are saying i'm overwhelmed but overwhelmed is such an intense emotion um but just in our everyday life we're like ah, we're overwhelmed I'm, I'm a little bit stressed but now i'm overwhelmed it's like mm-hmm. no you need to be able to say exactly what you're feeling because if you over label an emotion worse than what it actually is you're actually creating that feeling in your body and you're actually telling your brain that oh I'm overwhelmed which is making it worse than what it really is which means that you cannot cope anymore like Mm. overwhelmed is I cannot cope anymore Mm. and you're telling yourself this and I mean if you can't cope fantastic label it that but if you if you're just a little bit stressed, say, I'm I'm slightly stressed. I need to take a break. Mm. You know or what I mean? I'm you feeling, need to be able to, yeah. I'm feeling fatigued. And fatigue I'm feeling, or yeah, yeah or the stressed fatigue. When it comes to sad, like there's so much that we can go into. Like, and that's not just sad. It's like, are you sad because you're hurt? Are you um, even anger and stuff like that? People are like, mm. I'm angry, but are you hurt? Are you frustrated? Mm. Are you um there's there's so many we can there's a a nice beautiful wheel that you can really go and read um and it'll actually show you all the different areas of these emotions and i think the the main reason why it's so important to label is first of all you understand yourself because when you when you can label it you you shine a light on it I think I feel like that's the 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 concept here you're shining a light on the emotion so that it's not this thing that's living inside you it's now out there in the motion you're like huh okay I'm feeling hurt why am I feeling Mm. hurt okay I'm feeling hurt for now because of this I now realize why I'm feeling hurt and then you can either solve it or you can sit with it you don't Mm. have to solve everything you're going through but you can sit with it and and Mm witness it i think that's the main thing it's like a lot of the things you're not going to be able to solve there's a lot of things that people are going through constantly and sometimes there isn't a solution sometimes Mm -hmm. you just have to sit and witness yourself feeling the emotion but you cannot feel the emotion consciously unless you name it and actually realize what it is that you're feeling and i think that's where I think that's where confusion comes in so much, right? Because the other thing too is it's like, well, you say, oh, well, I know from my own personal experience, I go, oh, I don't know, I'm just overwhelmed. Or oh, I'm, I, yeah. it's always that I don't know, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know, something just feels off. And it's like, yeah, that can that completely puts you into a state of confusion with yourself when it's like actually mm. your body does know what you're feeling. Like you know what you're feeling. It's just exactly like Nicole said, it's just finding the right vocabulary vocabulary for it so that you give yourself a pathway forward into knowing how you can manage that how you can sit with that and reflect upon that and it gives you communicate it to someone else and pathways that um yeah allow you to just yeah 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 exactly yeah so I think so first of all that book that just um Maddie just spoke about Atlas of the Heart but also Brene Brown has a Netflix series that goes through all of this so if you're interested in in really sitting and understanding emotions Mm. like go and watch her net is it on Netflix um it might be on I don't know I think it's on on. it'll be on like YouTube or or no I I think it was definitely I'm pretty sure she's got it on Netflix or Neon I might have to watch that if it is I love you not watched it I haven't and holy shit what is what is she I've and I've read one of her other books because she is a is she um vulnerability and and, um, yeah courage and vulnerability yeah and she's oh she's a shame researcher 
that's yes. that's who she is and obviously um her whole thing is that vulnerability is courage that vulnerability yes. is a strength it's a yeah. superpower mm-hmm. um and it, and it's exactly like why we're talking as we're talking now because if you can communicate what is going on you can make new pathways into moving forward in healthier ways for yeah exactly sure yeah 100 percent. so i think that's the first thing and, and and then the whole um the whole thing about expression so I'm one of my favorite things on earth is self-expression. I love Mm. to understand um, myself. And as the deeper I go within myself, the deeper, the, the, the courageous part is expressing itself because Mm. I can uncover layers and layers of who I actually am, but it's really fucking scary to then express it. So when you're going through deep emotions and deep shifts in your life as well, the main thing is understanding how to express that into the world, which again, first step is naming the emotion, Mm -hmm. understanding what it is that you're feeling. You don't have to understand why you just need to understand what the why that's that's some deep yeah, shit. It ten, it te- yeah, it ten, <laughs> that tends to come later when you can yeah. get yourself into a state where you can actually work through that. But yes. it's just getting yourself into a different emotion, into a yes. different state of being before you tackle <clears throat> the bigger shit. Just get mm. yourself good. Yeah. And I think, Maddie, as well, you, you just me- mentioned getting yourself into a different state of being. I want to touch on that as well because I think I'm – look at me I'm gonna get my like drawings out I'm so fucking ready for this but (laughs) um, I think one of the biggest concepts for people is that um, we we tend to think we tend to think that when you um, are trying to heal from something and you're like very angry or you're depressed or you're anxious, like people mm. expect that, okay, to feel better, I need to feel love and peace and joy yeah. and excitement and all of those really high vibration emotions. And that's bullshit. What actually mm. needs to happen is you need to reach for the next better feeling. Yeah. So if you're feeling depressed, the, like depression feels like nothing. It feels like numbness. Mm. It feels like uh, despondent, but when you mm. can just reach for even feeling anxious that it's not a fucking good thing but mm. it's that next level up that you're actually feeling something and then so when you're, you're not feeling- avoid you're not like completely ignoring yeah where, and where you've just been yeah if you look i'm just drawing like a little scale here if you're on youtube essentially i've done like two tornado looking things that are joined in the middle and um the middle is neutral and then you're going downward um, downward spiral to the negative emotions. I say negative, but that's an in inverted commas. It's it's mm. it's yep. generally okay. low vibration and high vibration emotions. Now, obviously, at the top, you've got love and you've got peace and you've got joy, um, freedom, all of those kinds of things. And at the bottom, you've got guilt and shame and anxiety and depression. And kind of in the middle, you've got like anger and contempt. Mm. And then you've got going forward, you've got like... Uh, well, so is like competentness and courage and those kinds of things going upwards in the middle. Mm. Now, when it comes to mental health and um, spirituality, what I honestly believe is sometimes, like I'm forgetting that we're on a podcast. And I'm like, I know you just like a little teacher thing. <laughs> <laughs> I've got like my little piece of paper out here. I'm like pointing with my pen, like. <laughs> um but essentially um there's two ways to get to the end of the the spiral and you can either go up through the top towards love and peace and um high vibration things or sometimes you do need to feel it all and go to the depths of those emotions and go through the depression through it you feel it, you, you, mm. you go through it, you heal it and you alchemize it and then you mm. come out the other end. But mm. both ways are okay. You don't have to fight your way up. You can fight your way into depression, which is deep rest. And if you allow yourself to, I don't know. I think this is what I, you were t- touching on with the yeah. understanding and going into your life and, and yeah. looking at your life through a different mm-hmm. lens. And it, cause it, the thing is too, is that, you know, these things happen for a reason, just like we spoke about um, on the last episode with like intuition mm-hmm. and knowing like when your body 
starts to tell you, hey, I'm, I, I need some rest and mm. you don't and you get sick. It, it's the same thing. If you are avoiding and avoiding and avoiding or shoving shit down further and further and further, mm-hmm. A, I do believe obviously these things do happen for a reason. Like I said, it's because you've probably been doing it for so long that your body's like, come on, like we, we really have to address this now so we can let these stories go. We can let these beliefs about ourselves go. We can get the help we actually really need for this season to move forward. Um, and yeah, I, again, I think I'm like, if I'm looking at your sort of um, looking at like the tornado, looking at the scale, it's very much sort of, um, again on a personal note I will go it's the same with you with self-expression now because I'm really comfortable in those moments of sort of um feeling deep sadness or deep um loss or Mm -hmm. um feeling overwhelmed then um I we'll talk about it very openly I I have kind of mastered where the best support lays for me um so I can sort of jump from feeling the depths of those low lows and go shit okay get that shit out move it shake that shit off Mm -hmm. get the support that I know I need um which again ultimately comes down to how I'm like okay what do I need to do to take better care of myself and again I might have a little bit of anxiety that comes up but I will quite quickly jump quite high up to Mm. um feeling quite but again I can go the opposite end and I can feel quite um you know I can I can jump quite high but there is also the reality too that a lot of people and like you said we have to sort of move through up that scale because sometimes we'll miss things or we'll go oh Mm. I'm better now it's all good and then three months time six months time later you're like oh I didn't really deal with that or I didn't really let it sit for long did you numb did you suppress it in some way like I feel like that's a really important thing to do because Um, in in my experience with emotions like personally I know that I numb and I generally numb with food um so if I'm if I'm like oh I'm feeling sad like chocolate like 100% I'll just (laughs) there we go numb (laughs) numb with whatever else substances like um you know we I know Maddie and I are both in the we both like to numb with certain substances as in like um food uh socializing sometimes like I know other Mm. people that do the opposite and they don't socialize like Mm. I feel like I numb with socializing or I numb with getting myself a whole freaking Mm. tub of chocolate or a Mm. bag even with the socializing that can be seen as avoidance as well because Mm, it's also like you know I would rather instead of sitting here and dealing or sit, like actually mm. just addressing how I feel I'll just go out and put a little mask on and yeah be, yeah haha laughy and it's like shit come on actually like, yeah and again it, it can go this this is why this is such a big topic because again you might be listening to this and you might go okay but actually going out and seeing friends is of in and it's in my Benefits. support tool like toolkit like that's something that helps me to get out of my head a little bit so that I'm not just sitting and 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 stirring mm, in those emotions. And so stuff, yeah fuck it, it look like it's again and I, I, everyone, yeah. it feels really important at this point too again to say that um Nicole and I our experiences are our experiences and we can only really speak into that. So if you guys hear something in here where you're like, oh, I wouldn't do that. Well, cool. I'm so glad. Like you don't have yeah, to. Yeah, we can suggest things saying. that have worked for us yeah, and this or is worked just, for our friends, but yeah, that's and all it, we can do. It's just that whole point of opening up the conversation. And that's why we say, come and have these chats with us as well. Like after you hear this, we'd love to know how you've navigated things because you're also giving us more tools in our toolkit that when we stumble across um another you know friend or family member or stranger on the goddamn street that like is feeling or looking or you know like is not doing really well we might go okay well this is my experience but I know that someone else has had this one and someone else has had that one and you know you can on to in terms of the support side of things we can zone out even more and go okay cool so 
I maybe I need to ask a certain different set of questions to see where that you know this person's pain you, you get what I'm saying like it's just yeah, exactly it's so you need vast. to understand it's how so to vast. ask and how to support as well I feel like um yeah let's go into that you, you mentioned the support toolbox as well I feel like that's quite an important thing for people to develop like because it is different for every single person mm. so you need to understand well, what is in my support toolbox and sometimes like yeah like it, it's it's nice to have a, a slab of chocolate and feel fine like if mm. that's all I need that's fine but in in that moment where I had that four month episode chocolate's not really going to help me that's just <laughs> coming the freaking pain and what was uh, what I think is really important is um like you need to we as humans need to genuinely connect with other humans none yeah. of this like yeah. surface level bullshit and none of yeah. the surface level inquiry like if you worried about your friend mm. worry about your friend if you're like if this goes back to the intuition episode mm. if your intuition kicks off and says oh something's off with her don't make it about you don't like mm. think oh maybe she thinks something's bad with me or maybe she thinks this or like fuck that thing maybe it's about her maybe she's going through mm. something her him them whoever it is that I'm talking about they they might be going through something mm. and they're being off mm. with you they're retreating it's generally not about you and I know mm. a lot of people make it about you like what did I say what did I do mm. or they're pulling away maybe it's not about you mm. maybe it's something that you need yeah, to go absolutely. hang on here this is my friend family member co-worker she's acting strange maybe she needs support mm. that needs to be the first thing because mm. I guarantee you with the amount of mental health issues that we are seeing the increase the rise the mm. in the world at the moment I guarantee you it's not about you I guarantee yeah, well, you they've got something going on that's the thing too is like I now just as like a point of I always go to I just presume that everyone has mm. shit and I know at some in some level we all do so if you can switch that mentality or perspective of like even people who might be the smiliest bubbliest people or mm -hmm. don't outwardly maybe have the classic appearance of depression or anxiety I just presume that everyone has mm -hmm. something going on so that already drops you into a space of compassion for everyone that yes. when you're going into um, a situation. workplace when you're going out in public and look I'm a classic person that like someone might you know overtake me and do something stupid and I'll just be like fuck you you know <laughs> and it's like at the same time I'm like I don't know whether that person I always have to look back and I'm like, maybe that person was like rushing because they have someone in hospital right now or they had a pet mm -hmm. in the car that they had to get to the vet or mm -hmm. you know it's always just about Compassion know, just, first. Just presuming that yeah, everyone's got their shit, and just let, finding more compassion for people because, exactly as you said, there is such an increase in mental health disorders and mental health challenges and envir mm -hmm. Like again, it's environmental factors and changes, and um, everyone I think could just use a little bit more fucking compassion. I think. Yeah, hundred percent. Mm. So. When it, I think there's there's also on that note, there's so much, um, I want to say in inverted commas, help out there for me, people with mental health. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was doing a, a little bit of research, as I do, um, on like, <laughs> what are some of the tips that people- That should giving. be, sorry, I have to just intercede. That should be your like bio, <laughs> hashtag, I've just I done do a little that. bit of research. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, okay go back to it <laughs> yeah I feel like yeah like I should just get a tattoo I do research I do research or, yeah or research with like a little tick box like done <laughs> it's already done it's, it's in done. the bag <laughs> <laughs> um yeah so I did a really, little bit of research on like I just wanted to see like what are the tips that people are coming out with like to help people like like me tell yeah. them it's a health tip and yeah. um you know this could have been me 10 years ago because I would have been like saying the same thing like um, and I feel like now 10 years in of dealing with best friends and partners and colleagues and, um, so many people with mental health issues, uh, 
like family members, everything on and different varying scales and different areas of mental health. And then also like very minimally myself going through one little episode. So I can sort of understand I had don't like, again, it was only a four month stint then it wasn't that's the side tangent I want to say. I want to say it wasn't that bad because I want to just put a pin in that, remind me to talk about that because that's something I think a lot of people do as well. But one of the, the tips that I kept coming up with, which again, this is a scale. This is a, um, a scale that we need to work on. But one of the tips was just ask for help. Mm. Like that's the main thing that people with mental health problems, if you're in down in the dumps and you're struggling, you need to ask for help. And mm. I'm like, that's probably the number one hardest thing yeah. to do. And people mm. don't understand that that is the number one hardest. It's mm. like, well, why didn't they ask for help? Like if they were struggling, why didn't they ask for help? And mm. I think this is really fucking important. So f- coming from my side of the, the lens of being a support person in this, we need to give get them help. We're the mm. ones that are noticing things. We need to be the ones that are, are giving them help, not proactive asking if they need it. help. Yeah. yeah, we need to be pre- proactive from a support mm. place. We need to be proactive. We need to be asking the right questions. We need to be going, hey, I noticed this. Mm. What can I do? Not yeah. do you need help? Because the answers are always going to be no, because they don't yeah. understand. Yeah. I love that. They don't know what to help to ask like wait wait what do I ask if I need help what specifically do I need to ask you like come over to my house and do my washing no one in their right mind is going to ask for that there's no ways no one's going to I mean when you're pregnant Mm. and you're struggling and you've just had a newborn you barely ask for that but people know that when you've had a newborn and you're you're going to be struggling they know that you'll have a mental health issues after pregnancy they know that you're struggling with a newborn they know that you might be recovering mm-hmm. physically mm-hmm. they know that you need help they assume mm-hmm. and they come over and they do your washing mm-hmm. parents sometimes come and live with you for a couple of months yeah. and they do your washing and they mm-hmm. they make you dinner and they think that needs to happen for people with mental, mental health, health as well yeah. Bang like on. you can pick that up as a support person yeah. and go, this person needs help. I haven't seen them in a couple of days. Text them. They don't reply. Show up at their fucking house mm. and see what needs doing. Mm. Do they need some washing done? Do they need a meal cooked for them? Yeah. You show mm. up as a support person. Don't just assume that they're fine. Don't just assume that they've pulled away for you or you said mm. something wrong and now they're not they're, they're, they Something happened. No, mm. you show up for them. If you can have a list of people that are your people that you will do anything for. And then even some people that are acquaintances, if you can be that person that picks up on the shit and Mm. shows up for those people, Mm. that's what you need to do because they are not going to ask for help. That's probably the last thing that they're going to do. Yeah. And, and even if, um, you know, I guess this is just affirmation for anyone out there. Like, if you think to, oh, you know, but they might they might think I'm weird for doing that or they might think I, you know, I'm overstepping, it's still it's still showing compassion. It's showing love for someone and showing up to say, Hey, look, you know, I, I'm here. I'm here mm. even if things aren't that bad. I'm I'm just here. I'm still you here know? Yeah. And and it goes back to exactly like you said, like we I just think as a species are are lacking that sort of connection with people. And Look, COVID and the lockdowns and the pandemic, it it didn't help that. It literally separated us all even more so and gave us more reason to do that. And you again, you look at the mental like the mental health statistics, like it did a fucking number on people over the last few years. And this just feels like a massive call to come back together. And exactly mm-hmm. like you said, it you know, we there's a certain standard that we have for newborn mothers and there's a certain standard that we have for people who have just lost a husband or a wife or a family member. Mental health is no fucking different. That mm-hmm. this is still something where we need to show up for our people and show up for our community. And mm-hmm. um and, and even if look, even if you and not other, on a surface level, not in like, are you okay? Yeah, and then forget yeah. about it. And yeah and like I'm serious I'm here for you absolutely and and I think too like um I want to touch note on this just very quickly as well is that I have to also acknowledge that sometimes a part of our um our struggles are that we don't have community and we don't have friends to that degree um 
but again mm-hmm. we will talk about this a little bit more because this is a this is a massive part of it is making sure that you are setting yourself up in communities and systems and environments that there are people who um can equally um give support but also offer you an opportunity to to learn how to give that support yourself back Mm -hmm. to when you're in the right frame of mind as well um yeah I think that's a a caveat to um what we were talking about earlier about um creating a lifestyle where where you can can help yourself as well so um one of the other tips that everybody gets told is to um, like do meditation. Like when you're depressed and anxious, you like you need to do meditation and you need to mm. go do exercise and you need to do all these things. Now, while that on a surface level is fucking great advice, on a deeper level, when you're experiencing these things, you cannot bring yourself to do those things. Yeah, absolutely. and it frustrates the fuck out of me because I watch my husband go through these things and I'm Mm. like but just can you do the thing can Mm. you just do the can you just do the like it will help Mm. like I know it will help you can you just do the fucking thing (laughs) and I'm like I've had conversations where I'm like I've I've, I mean over the 10 years that we've been together I've had conversations of like why can't you just do the thing and I've also Mm. had conversations of me softening and just uh, watching him go through it and just Mm. being there and then um over the years I've developed with him and then I've implemented with friends and family members as well to just just let me know as a support person where you're at like on a scale of one to ten with anxiety where are you at right now and then if so if he's 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 having an anxious episode for a week or two he'll tell me over those comments he's like I'm on an eight yeah and I'm like cool okay I'm here just tell me what you need and I'm, but I'm here, I know he's on an eight, so I'm aware I'm, yeah. I'm supporting him in other ways of like, just like something so stupid, but it helps is like when he's going through something like that, I try and make sure that I'm on top of the house and I'm keeping yeah, it. Yeah. Just lightening the load. And, yeah. Whereas yeah. obviously we're both um, <laughs> lazy people and it gets messy <laughs> sometimes but when he's fine, like it obviously gets, it gets us both like, yeah. you know, we're like, we need to tidy the house and yeah. throw shit away and stuff. Um, but when it gets to, when he's in that state, I'm like, this is my responsibility. Yeah. And it can to, be I need to take so that load. crippling. That's, <clears> and that's, <throat> that's an idea. The other thing too, is obviously we can, I mean, my ADHD as well and intermingled in it is that again, like, clutter in your space and Mm, and not having your spaces feeling clean and fresh and how and and filling the room with things that you love also play a huge factor in in your emotional well-being you know how Mm -hmm. your body is experiencing the energy around you and again that's the same thing as if you're in toxic friendships or you're you've got toxicity within um you know even your whānau dynamic like um Mm -hmm. it really can play a part so yeah yeah so all of these things are like creating a lifestyle that is good for you that supports you it supports your well-being Mm -hmm. and I say creating the lifestyle because what needs to actually happen is that you need to start these creating these habits to support you before you're in the down and the dumps Mm -hmm. place because to start a habit like let's meet do some exercise, let's go for a run. Cause people say that, you know, running is great for your mental health. Like you're not going to start fucking running when you're depressed. Yeah. There's no ways in hell. Like you're barely going to start running when you're in a good mood because <laughs> run- it's fucking hard to start it's fucking running. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. It's fucking running. Yeah. And like, you know, trying yeah. to start a habit like that, even when you're in a fucking good place is so hard. So yeah. expecting someone to do that or expecting yourself to do that when you're in a bad place is just, it's just not going to happen. So mm-hmm. What Maddie and I were talking about is is trying to develop these habits and lifestyle patterns when you're in a good place and then making sure that you're implementing them and uh, keeping them going so that when you do get into that bad place, that mm. either you've built up a, a, a place that you're not, you don't go as deep or as dark, mm. or you can still fight your way out of it by going like I've had three weeks of running I've been so good at running Mm. um 
I can maybe take myself on a run, even if I'm depressed, I can maybe do that because I've been Mm. doing it for the last three weeks. Mm. Whereas if you've never done it before, (laughs) you think you're going to do it now when you're in a dark place. It's yeah. not, yeah, it's not going to happen. And the thing is too, because I, I love how you talk about, obviously, you know, like it's the habits for, for people like myself who have maybe traveled through this for quite some time and they probably know to the depth of their core, they're probably still going to have moments. It's mm-hmm. daily. It's daily habits. It's not like doing things once a week. Like you really need to commit to yourself because it is actually the daily practices and habits that Mm. will exactly like you said just when things do get a little bit more stressful or a bit chaotic or um again in those moments where people are feeling real overwhelm those daily habits can make the world of a difference and it can be like I said the difference between not wanting to get out of bed at all to getting up and even doing five minutes on the treadmill or going for a walk for five minutes but Every single day, if you can create these habits and make them a part of your routine, a part of your lifestyle, mm. I, I can't. So, what are some of the habits enough. that you do? Um, and look, this is that <laughs> look. This is I'm still not a daily girl, and I but I know the importance around yeah, it. Yeah, same. You know, for me, it's movement. So whether that be um like dancing putting on music and shaking my body um whether it be jumping on the treadmill or trying to get into the gym with my partner whether it be um you know I did I went through like a stint not that long ago um a long ago of doing like tai chi in the morning and oh I love that I want yeah, to do just that slow intentional movement and because that's the thing is that it doesn't have to be fully shaking your body your body knows the exact movement that it needs and sometimes Mm. it's a stretch sometimes it's going out and just putting your feet in the ground or stomping your feet on the ground or sometimes it might not might not be rhythmic dancing it's just shaking different aspects of your body and sometimes it'll be you know one day you might be like you know and for women too this also links into like um the cycles of your um Mm -hmm. of your period as well like you might be just craving a slower walk or you might be like fuck it I'm gonna go and lift fucking weights today right. and and do or all just of that. like go like do a massive dance party mm-hmm. yeah and yeah. it's just so 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 yeah movement is one and look diet is another huge fucking thing and I'm still again still getting this on my own lock but you know making a nice nutritious meal and having a well-balanced diet and again just like mental health a well-balanced diet I do believe looks different for everyone. Everybody yeah. needs if everybody's body needs something, I think, different. Um, vitamins. Vitamins are a big thing. And and the biggest thing of all is water. I was literally um I saw this video come up the other day and, and it was this man who's written a book about um how so many of our Ail, like ailments so many of our stresses so many of the things it just comes from an extended period of dehydration like long mm. periods of dehydration and you know um so yeah water is water is a huge thing um and then I have my own personal quirks too where like singing really helps me like shifting yeah. the energy I, love that. I believe that as yeah. well yeah and listening to different sorts of music on different sort of days that I need different sorts of things or Sometimes for me, it's sitting in the shower. I will plonk my ass on the floor and I will slip and slide around like a fucking seal <laughs> and I let the water come down. I let the water cleanse me and mm. I ask it to intention take away. Intention is so yeah, important. Prayer, yeah, prayer, like intentional prayer and like mm. affirmation. And um, again, for some people too, like some days or some months, I really fucking vibe with meditation. And, um, and then some days I don't. And I do my meditations normally at night when we're going to bed or I will go outside and I'll put on like um, different free, like different types of frequency mm. things. It doesn't have to be guided. Like binaural beats things. Yeah. And yeah. I think too, people need to understand um, or again, again, from my perspective, doing meditation, I think is less about the guided aspect of what the person is saying um, it's more so just giving yourself space to like 
breathe and actually focus on your breath and Present like as well. focus on yeah being in the here and now and noticing your thoughts coming and going and and just letting them do that um I think people um yeah who um are maybe quite new to it um think that they have to like sit with their eyes like closed and, and and not move and that they have to have these big worldly spiritual experiences but mindfulness and meditation is just being with yourself in the moment and giving mm, yourself mm. again little pockets of peace little pockets of balance and um just and, and it can look different for everyone yeah 100%. Absolutely. yeah <clears throat> uh, yeah because my um, I think that mindfulness meditation is quite important as well. And if we go into this little thing, little side tangent here about meditation is that what I found is that a lot of pe- there's two different types of people and there's people that can or like doing um, sitting still and close your eyes meditations. And then there's people that like doing active meditations and like Tai Chi and Qigong yeah, and those movement. sort of things um, and, or walking meditations or even like painting or like yeah. some sort of creative outlet, like gardening, painting, drawing, um, all of those kinds of things. They're active meditations. And mm. sometimes the people that have struggled with their all their whole life that are, they go, I can't, I can't meditate. I've tried, I've sat down. I, I can't sit still. I can't do it. Those people, I would highly recommend picking up a pen and starting to draw or getting one of those um, coloring books and just color in Mm -hmm. or so get out in your garden and start weeding your garden I don't like doing Mm -hmm. that I I get it I can feel it's therapeutic I fucking don't like weeding. it's not for me that's not for me like there's a part of me that like but the weeds want to go there and who the fuck decided it was a weed like you know it looks (laughs) it's pretty it's got it's got a flower flower to me (laughs) you can stay overgrow my garden (laughs) exactly it's not it's not it's not great for the garden but I'm like but it's so pretty why would I pull it out (laughs) but yeah so like there's that and then there's also the like painting and stuff and I find I I like lots of different types of meditation but I do find um those creative outlets and just being in that zone and just Mm. painting or doing something like that is a beautiful form of of active meditation because what it actually does then what Maddie um touched on a little bit is that it's getting you out of your head and into your body it's getting you right into the present moment you're like taking the paint you're dipping it in the water you're putting some paint on and you're painting you're not thinking about past present future you're like you're not thinking you're being and that's Mm -hmm. what meditation is all about and when the often when you're sitting like that with your eyes closed and your fingers on your feet I mean on your knees and stuff Mm. and you're like sitting straight back and everything like that it's really tough to move past the self of like the conscious self of your brain just thinking thoughts it's it's difficult to move past that might move past the analytical brain and into the body Mm. but when you're doing something active um, you kind of get lost in that flow state. Mm. And that flow state is you getting into the unconscious. Mm. That flow state is you bypassing that analytical mind so that you can get into that unconscious and be in that present moment. And it is also too, like, um, it also allows you to sort of, again, like, as we said, detach from the thoughts, but it's also like detaching from the ego as well, which the ego is very mm-hmm. sort of determined to keep you where you are and and being you're in Safe. the heart you're in yeah. the heart space. You're in you're in the knowing of the here and now and and connecting to something that that it, it doesn't have that like again ego has its space and it's so needed for lots of different mm-hmm. things. But when the ego is becoming something that is um it's spiraling or it's it's actually not allowing you to move forward in healthier ways you want to get into that heart space so that you can actually receive the clarity so that you can be like oh this does actually feel better to me this is something I could I want to now put in my support like toolkit and 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 this is for me but when the ego is sort of saying there's nothing for me I can't do anything the meditation doesn't work so nothing's going to work for me that's Mm -hmm. when it gets dangerous because it's like look, you need to ditch all the the preconceived ideas of what meditation has to look like. And you have to find your own moving prayer. You have to find your own moving inspiration Mm. and find your own moving meditation or again, just your meditation and what that needs to be for you. Because um, we're all different in in all Mm -hmm. aspects. And so we're going to need that support from ourselves in so many different ways. Yeah. 
Oh my gosh. Okay. Well, I feel like we've touched on this kind of stuff a little bit. I mean, we wrote a whole list, hey, Maddie, of things that we wanted yeah. to talk on. So I, I would, on that I would, list that you yeah, wanna... I'm, I'm already zoning in. I'm like, hold oh, on, yeah. hold on. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I definitely would love to speak a little bit into, um, okay, so there's two things. So I want to speak into the dark night of the soul, but mm. then I also want to speak into um, the body holds trauma because that's something yes. that I've seen coming up um, a whole heap. Um, and I think, and then again, we, we, it, it is our moral ob- obligation at this point. If we're bringing up these conversations, we also want to make sure we are leaving, um, you as the listener, um, with some actual places after here that you can go and look at yourself or, um, again, just, um, outside organizations and stuff like that within New Zealand or in an app form that you yourself can go and access um, if you need to or um, as the supporter um, you now can have that information so that if you've got a friend you can say shit look I I can't get to your house right now here's this number that you can call that's Mm. that's there that's that's for this that's for you so we also obviously need to to make that note as well um yeah 100% and I guess if we maybe touch a little bit on look to be honest with you I know we gave a trigger warning at the beginning but I almost think that we could probably put miscarriage and and uh, loss into maybe a bigger topic on grief spirit babies grief um and and all of that sort of stuff yeah I feel we can like definitely do that we can move we, that to another episode yeah I think if we just focus <clears throat> on the dark night of the soul which opens up a whole nother thing because it is mm-hmm. the, the I guess more spiritual aspect to things um and then yeah other support and places support. and, and yeah. um, the trauma and, and the body and and that sort of stuff I think that would be really really good yeah okay fantastic so let's get into the dark night of the soul and like what does this actually mean you you might have heard this concept before you might not have um so we want to just touch on this because uh, maddie and i both believe that there is um the the intersect between mental health and spiritual well-being is is very very closely linked Mm. and we we both believe that there our mental health is often often signaling to us what needs to change in our life and sometimes like in the previous episode in intuition we spoke about ignoring the thing Mm. ignoring it suppressing it um, turning our cheek because Mm. either we don't understand or we don't believe we can change or we don't believe that that whatever we need to change to is going to be good for us or possible for us or anything like that so we ignore we ignore we ignore Mm. and sometimes this comes up in our mental health when we've been suppressing it and suppressing it and suppressing it and it eventually ends up with a dark night of the soul and sometimes these can be instantaneous um, but often more often than not it's a culmination of a lot of suppression a lot of numbing a lot of ignoring Mm. and we've entered into this space where it's generally the lowest of the lows and we're questioning life. We're questioning our purpose. I we're just want to say everything. Go the for one it. the one word that really comes to mind is it's also initiation. Like the dark night of the mm-hmm. soul, it can also be really linked to it's an initiation into deeper understanding of yourself, deeper understanding mm-hmm. of where you come from and how you're feeling and and what you're moving into. Um, but yeah, exactly. You obviously yeah, carry on. But I just the word initiation just felt really yeah. Really, really, that's um, that, I feel like say. that's definitely a, a perfect like an initiation or a portal into a new self. Yeah, and yeah, it, yeah. it's like the doorway that you're not willing to open because it's fucking scary because we don't want to go there because that that doorway leads to the unknown. And mm. who are we? in that unknown and we're clinging to this self that we are right Mm. now we're clinging to this identity to this lifestyle to these people to this environment we're clinging which aren't working it's not working yeah Yeah, yeah. it's not working and um, something is telling us that something needs to change but we are ignoring that because Mm. it's so much easier for us to hang on to what we know versus actually accepting that things need to change and leaning into that unknown into that possibility so what we actually do is we will recreate the feelings that we've always had we'll recreate our um the emotions we'll recreate the thought patterns we'll recreate everything continuously um in our life because that's what's familiar Mm. and the 
we'd rather have a painful familiar in our life than to reach in that unknown because we don't know if it's going to be the out of the frying pan into the fire. Yeah. But <clears throat> what people don't understand with the dark night of the soul is that when you lean into it, when you um, surrender to that experience, what you're actually doing is, I kind of think of it as these small deaths in a spiritual yeah. sense. Yeah. It's a small death. And when you can lean into that, that death of self, then you, you come out the other end. Um, I want to say awakened, but awakened. I was going to say feels, this. Where you go? Yeah, yeah it, do, it, it does. It do, it's like, again, like it just feels you're awakening to completely different um, aspects of your experience as a human being or your, yes. your, your whole existence here. Like, I think when we talk about dark night of the soul and when you link it with spirituality, it, it tends to come when, say, you've had um, someone has died, like you've had a, a loss mm-hmm. or, again, your whole world just feels like it's combusting and nothing makes sense anymore because it no longer aligns but you haven't quite got that that information or that knowing and it's like the dark night of the soul comes this initiation comes so that it's just like oh like this feels awful but I understand why it has to be here because it's it's Mm -hmm. unraveling it's um it's peeling off um and it's like little again the little death is like it's like little ego death like you're like yeah oh okay I'm I'm seeing myself in a completely new way and seeing yourself in a completely new way just like you said you have to detach from your old way of being and when you do that that can feel very vulnerable it can feel very isolating it can feel very like you know completely unknown and and and, 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 you know foreign to your body because you've been avoiding it or it's just that you've never experienced it up until this point and then um yeah and it's scary as fuck because now you know you're changing but the rest of the world didn't change your external environment or maybe it did but like for me what's what I've had multiple experiences like this and this is where courage and vulnerability comes in so hard because you have that small death of your ego of yourself and when I say we say self or ego it's essentially the the ego what we're talking about is this identity that we've built Mm. above ourselves so in we spoke about this in the first episode as well that there's that we've got two sense of selves we've got the self that we created to survive which is our Mm. ego so we created the thought patterns we created the behaviors we created essentially our personality over the however many years we've been alive and that is who we are as a person but is not who we are yeah yeah. And there's these two different things that are constantly, um, most of the time throughout our life, conflicting. Mm. But often the self with a capital S, um, your soul self, your, your mm. true self, that can, you, when you start to awaken to that self, she, he, it sits there and observes what's going on with the false self, with the ego. And often along the way, there's all these, like, when it comes to awakening, there's often, you can have an awakening that's this huge combustible experience mm-hmm. and you're like, what yeah. the fuck just happened? Yeah. Or you can have an awakening that is a series of doors, of series yeah. of portals that yeah. you keep walking through and you mm. keep going through and you're like, holy shit, what is, what is more this? This is interesting. And, and it's yeah. just a little, I feel like the image in my mind is like Alice in Wonderland walking through another door and then walking through mm. another door and walking yeah. through another door and walking. That was like, like, oh little, shit. Little, <laughs> like, just oh shit. Going. Like, where, yeah. where am I? Like, who am I? Like, oh, I wasn't who I was yesterday. Yeah. I can't go back to yesterday. I'm not that person anymore. Yeah. Like, these, it's these small awakenings as you go and go on. And I think the most scary part is that <clears throat> when you've gone through one of those doors, is now how do I express myself? Because I'm not that person yeah. anymore. Yeah. So, how do I show up in the world, in my environment where people know me? They know who I am, what I am. They know my identity but I've just shared that identity Mm. I've just left that through that door that I just traveled through now how do I express this new version of me and this is where the I feel like anxiety and depression comes in is because we feel stuck we feel stuck in the life that we're living that we built for ourselves we feel stuck in the identity that we created for ourselves and we don't realize that I that identity is not meant to be set in stone Mm. that we get to change that identity we get to evolve and evolve and evolve Mm. and evolve and I feel like the the most the the deepest that I've gone into my depths is when 
I didn't know how to express myself when my identity mm. had shifted, mm. when I'd moved myself through that door, through that portal, through that awakening. Mm. And I didn't know how to express myself in the world anymore because I wasn't that Nicole anymore. Mm. I'm a different version. And of I me. feel like society sets this up <clears throat> as well, because it's like, you you know, we're, we're, we're all pushed into a system where it's like you you all need to be the same, think the same, do the same, and you grow up and you're expected to know what you want to do and who you are by 18. And as you get older, again, it's like your brain's like, oh, but I, I am, I'm forever changing, but the world's telling me I should already know who I should be. Uh-huh. So then when you shift, there's like this this disconnect because you're like, should I be changing? Like, because then, then I, are then they going to think I'm nuts? Are they, yeah, what, are they I, what will they yeah. think? What will they think? What will they think? What will they think? What will they yeah. think? And that's, I feel like the biggest thing there is what and will they just, think? crushes your multifaceted nature and our our, our 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 human essence of evolution and um the fact that we all need to continue to grow and change because otherwise it's you, you're all stuck in the same fucking box and um yeah I just yeah yeah I agree like that's that is probably the biggest thing there is is I think if we can um, what we can do on this podcast again like it's called the conscious cat list podcast for a reason um, and this we want to be that catalyst cat she's Maddie's just showing us the cat line on the big watching Meow. YouTube or you're listening um, but essentially we want to be that catalyst for you so it's explaining these concepts to you mm-hmm. letting you know um, what we felt what we've gone through and trying to um show you what we've the portals we've gone through and how and why we've experienced these things we want that to be a catalyst for you as well to understand so when you are feeling stuck in your old identity but you felt like you've gone through a small death and you and you want to um, be able to express that like that is normal Mm -hmm. like we need to normalize that shit we need to normalize that people are going to go through these mini deaths over time and that Mm -hmm. to notice that when you are feeling stuck and anxious and depressed that maybe you you, what's happening is you're trying to go through one of these small deaths Mm -hmm. but you're not listening Mm -hmm. that you're not you're not being aware of this change that is a calling to you that you mm. you're being called to something different a different life completely and what you need to do is put that old identity to rest mm. put that old identity to rest and come out and walk through that portal as a new version of you having let go of the shit that no longer serves you mm. and what 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 is required for this entire process is being conscious now this is so fucking hard because 95 percent of us is run on a program Mm. like we we've got five percent conscious which goes i want to go make myself a sandwich now and the other 95 percent is unconscious which is just Mm. a complete repetitive program that is running and if we cannot Mm. make ourselves conscious as in start to acknowledge our thought patterns our behaviors start to acknowledge um, the patterns that are repeating in our lives the um, start to notice our identity that is a mm. construct that we've created and start to notice that we are separate from that identity and we get to observe that identity play out mm. and go hmm, why am I like this why do I behave like this I see a pattern there can I not change that pattern if we can separate ourself from ourself self mm. big letter s from yeah. ourselves small little small letter s if we can separate ourselves from ourselves and stop start and observing ourselves in the space that's when we become conscious yeah and that is what we wish upon you so when you're going through that dark night of the soul yes there's the human side of the mental health and asking for help and seeking out communities and we are going to give you the tools and the (coughs) places to go to as well (coughs) <coughs> hello throat chakra <laughs> um and we will give you those things on a human yeah. level but on a spiritual level yeah. i want you to know that this this is might be something that you need to fucking acknowledge mm. Mm. um it might not just be physiological it might not just be mental it might not just be emotional 
but it might also be spiritual and acknowledging called, that there yeah. is very, very, um, there's lots of different bodies that you need to acknowledge there. Mm. And probably starting off at the physiological level, like, yeah. have I drunk enough fucking water today? Yeah. Have I had enough sleep? Have I had enough sleep? Mm. Have I given myself a nutritious meal? Have I, do I have enough vitamins? Like, am I, my DHAs and omegas like sorted in my body like those mm. kind of physiological things this is why those fitness podcasts and shit like that do so well because if you're not acknowledging the the base yeah. level the human physical i'm in my body level like you're not like the spiritual shit's not going to matter so starting mm. at the bottom and then going to okay mental mental and emotional like mm. let's acknowledge these two bodies What's my mental state doing? How can I support myself? What's my emotional state doing? How can I support myself? And then taking it one step fucking further and going, what's happening with in my spiritual realm here? Mm. What's my purpose? Mm. What am I, what am I moving into? What mm. what can I create with my life? What what am I stepping away from and moving into right mm. now? I always feel um toe with the dark night of the soul. Again, I I love to I love to think that. Yeah, it's a call from, you, I don't know, your higher self, your future mm -hmm. self that's saying to you, there are so many new ways to look at this and there are endless possibilities. And mm -hmm. when you're feeling stuck and you end up in this place of like, shit, nothing's working and you're peeling off all these layers and you're trying to figure out who you are, I, I always like to think again, like you're not alone like in that moment you're actually being called from a from a higher perspective a, a higher frequency a, a higher vibration into something better much better for you that even though it can feel so fucking god awful yeah that actually you yourself your your higher self is trying to guide you to something far more aligned and far more freeing and abundant and expansive and balanced and comfortable and joyful and and all of these things um but you have and, to have the courage to change yeah and 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 it's also it's the commitment to you once you and again this is why it, even even I I can think from a personal level, you know, trying to think about all of these things. If if you're just not getting enough sleep and you're not eating, it's too much to tackle. So if you're hearing this again, you're like, oh, fuck. Okay, well, you know, how do I contact my higher self? Stop. Just fucking stop and 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 yeah. take a bit of a <laughs> rewind. Some water. Because if you are feeling overwhelmed, even by by that, that is again your point of call of that. If you don't have the answers or the clarity, it's it's not that they're not there and they're not coming. It's just that go back a few steps make sure that you're not mm -hmm. skipping anything you've got all the time in the world you, you are never going to miss out on, on the things that that are coming for you because you're feeling a little bit sad now you know like the whole point is that again it, it's a calling your mental health this dark night of the soul whatever aspect it's coming in it's a calling for you to better understand yourself and better understand the situations and environments that you're in mm -hmm. so that you can <clears throat> better stop being honest yourself. with yourself yeah, absolutely. And that again, that goes back to courage because it's and, and that also again that goes back to communication because yes. you almost can't have courage without understanding what it is that you're trying to have the strength and determination and commitment for. But if you can know, well, this is anger because it's ready, ready, rah and ready, ready, rah, well, cool. Then I have the courage to now, you know, step back and, and take a few breaths and, and have some water or remove myself from these spaces that are creating these emotions or creating this environment that's that's bringing that feeling into my body so i mean mm. fucking hell it's a whole goddamn circle of life isn't it really <laughs> Jesus. it's the circle of life and we're moving forward it's the circle the, the circle, circle of life, life. Wow. <laughs> I think we I think we needed that. <laughs> we did. Um <clears throat> so I think um one of the things, one of the most important things about this is is the act of holding space for other people. Now, um this is such a difficult thing to do. And I've I've honestly had trouble with this being the natural coach that I am mm. um, through my entire life growing up. I've always been that person that gives advice. I've mm. been that person. And um, I've had to realize over time uh, that 
sometimes the giving advice is not fucking necessary. <laughs> and that, oh my gosh, this links in so beautifully because I wanted to quickly make note to the I, yeah. I never say it right, the Mel Robin Rob Robinson, mm. Rob Robbins. Um, Mel Robbins. The, the the let them theory and this comes into the whole thing too is that people will make these changes you know when When they're ready when they're ready and obviously if you see someone that that is you know hurting themselves or others of course don't just let them there's time and a place but the whole point too is as a support person often when we're just giving advice and we're just you know giving them the answers and we're trying to do this they need that you know sometimes the person again that, that is in in a in a state of depression or, or has the feelings of anxiety they actually need to feel them because it's teaching them yeah. something and and I'm very similar to you I, I feel like I'm a fixer like a, there's people pleasing things where I, I don't mm-hmm. like to see people in pain and, and I don't like to and I can resonate and I can because I I, I can feel energy and I can mm-hmm. I can feel other people's emotions naturally I just you just want to scoop them up and go everything will be okay and do this and do that but you're you, you I, you're I'm not that gentle <laughs> <laughs> Especially with, with my my loved ones I'm like can you just fucking like just do the thing like I've yeah. told you I know it will help can you just fucking do the thing and I get like <laughs> I get frustrated yeah. and I'm just like I, I I but you can't yeah. like you just yeah. need to let them go through and, it well and that's that's the thing is that's where the let the <clears throat> let them comes in for you too yeah it's let like, them. look if they're depressed let them be depressed and that's I think mm. what you are sort of leading into as well as like fix sort, them. Of, sort of just the reality is is that um yeah we, we need to let people feel these things and also when people come to you and they say like I'm depressed sometimes we can't just sprinkle love and light on them we need to let them feel <laughs> what well, it is you know what I mean like exactly we, yeah. we have to let them feel how they're feeling because a how they're feeling is valid um, mm-hmm. just because we might not understand or we might not, um, you know, we have a perception of how we think that they should be doing things, but this is their experience. Mm-hmm. You just need this to their... hold them in that, hold yes. them in that space. Exactly. Like I'm here for you. Um, tell me, tell me what you need. Even if you don't tell me what you need, I'm here. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and like I, you said earlier, yeah. like the beautiful things that you did come up with, like sometimes some people they 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 don't know what they they need and it is yeah. beautiful treat them as if they have just, I mean they to a certain degree they they are a little bit lost within themselves so it is like losing a family member or or mm. you know giving birth and it's a whole new way of being just treat them with more compassion exactly yeah. like said, m- make a meal or organize for all of the friends to maybe make a meal and fill up their freezer look trust me go around to their house and do their dishes or go around to their house and do a load of washing for them or vacuum their house or just sit with them and put their favorite movie on and and bring Mm. some bring some snacks and sometimes and yeah I think you mentioned earlier as well being present is important but like you said Mm. well maybe people will think that's weird yeah they fucking will think it's weird because this day and age that we've created is that we're not actually that connected so fucking connect be that friend that Mm. you can show up at someone's house Mm. and be like hey I'm here what can I help with and don't Mm. just say what can I help with because generally people are going to be like no you don't need Mm. to help me with anything example but just be Be there like yeah be the example connect with people on a deeper level like um like I think one of the things is that making people aware that you are there and that you're they it's not a burden what they're going to be mm. giving to you like and it's one no of my expectation friends, yeah yeah exactly like I yeah. I need to make known to the people that I care about that you can come to me and in inverted commas burden me with all of your yeah. fucking worries like yeah. I don't need to give you advice so you can mm. tell me Nicole I need advice or you can tell me listen mm. Nicole I just need a bitching session right now mm. um I, and I'm here for that like I'm here for anything that you need as long as you tell me and sometimes you don't know what mm. you need and I will ask you and this has been developed over time guys mm. I promise you I was that irritating person that just had all the fucking advice and I had mm. difficult conversations with friends mm. who said I don't need your fucking advice. And mm. we were close and we had issues and we spoke through those issues and mm. we're still friends now because we learned to communicate mm. as friends. And this is something that we needed to develop. So I was that person that was just like, well, here's some advice. Here's what can help you. Here's the, mm. And it's just like, no, actually that's not what they needed at the time. Mm. And what they needed was someone just to have to be there and listen. Mm. And so now I know that 
there's different ways to help someone. Either you mm. need to just be there and listen. Mm. Sometimes they do need advice and they want your opinion. Mm. And sometimes they just want to fucking bitch mm. and they want you to bitch with them. And it's, and then, it's, it's always yeah. beautiful, exactly with those three ones you've given. It's always beautiful that you can, <clears throat> you can simply just say that what is it that you need for like like you said what is it you need from me yeah you what do you need ask, from me? you know do, do you do you want advice or do you just want to be heard or you know do, do you need to just fucking rant it out and, and let that emotion or those feelings or those thoughts just get out of your brain um I also want to quickly make note too because it just comes to mind um having friends that are battling depression or anxiety while you yourself are is a whole nother mix as well. Uh, and yeah. that's why it's also important as we're always, again, we're the teachers and we're the learners that when you can start to learn your own, you know, the things that are in your support toolkit that help you and you also be proactive in ways that, that your friends or your whanau could, um, could could get support from as well so if you're not in the place um the best thing that you can do is is say um you know obviously again validate them in their feelings hey you know i i hear what you're saying i can i can see that this must be a tremendous amount of stress on you and i would really love to give you this time right now i am moving through a similar thing use that as a way to connect but also say look I see you I um, feel you I understand you yeah and I'm sitting in it too um but I also I just I need to pull myself back to to really get good with me in the meantime you know um have you contacted xyz um you know have um don't forget about these numbers or don't forget about this thing here and um yeah I, I think it can be very very easy and again this is personal experience is I notice sometimes, you know, when I get into the depth of my depression or my seasons of depression is even though I know I have so much love around me and my friends will be messaging me, I'm like, I no one loves me. I'm so <laughs> alone. Like, and again, yeah. it's you just feel isolated. Yeah. And, and I do believe too, look, it's, and you might you might really resonate with this too. When your partners or your friends are going through something, and and they they can't be at their best self, they might go through periods where you know might feel like they're a bit of a shitty friend or might feel like they're a bit of a shitty person because they're just it's so it, you know it it's just huge emotions. And again, if you're a good friend and you love this person. Mm -hmm sometimes you just you just have to have that compassion that they're going through something and you're going to give them your 110 percent if you can um and then sometimes again it's just reading the situation and if it's something that you know that they just sort of have to move through um and there's not much that you can do because you know you don't have the tools yourself or you're in a situation yourself just you know again i want to make note of like prayer and affirmation and you can send you can send love and support energetically to these people and they'll mm -hmm. come back you know sometimes people do need to just be like oh, I feel fucking fear and I'm pissed off at the world I'm not even pissed off at you but I'm just I'm just presenting fucking pissed off mm -hmm. give them just let them give, give them, them space. their space and let Hold them space feel give them exactly space. what yeah. they need to feel and they'll come back and nine times out of ten you know they normally feel a little bit of guilt and, and shame about sometimes the way that they act or respond and, uh -huh. and stuff like that but again if you can just have compassion for people how you would like to, people to have compassion for you in those moments it's it's huge it can save friendships yeah. it can save relationships those... it can save communities so it all comes back down to compassion again as well mm. mm -hmm. Oh my gosh, this is amazing. I think, uh, Maddie, we just need to talk about, I think we're going to have to move the um, the body keep score to another episode as well, because yep. that's going to yep. be yep. huge. But yep. let's let's go into, I know Maddie's um, prepared some places that you can speak to. We really wanted to make people aware that obviously speak to your friends, speak to your family members, but there are mm. professionals out there that um, support people with mental health where, mm. especially in that um, circumstance where 
um like we've spoken you don't know how to articulate what you're feeling you just know that it's not good and Mm. sometimes it's really difficult to mention that to like there's people in the world like I know I've got a friend who struggles with mental health they don't believe in mental health yeah Yeah. they don't believe that people can have anxiety and depression they just don't get it at all Mm. um and those are her family members and it's Mm. really tough to be in a situation like that where you're not being your emotions aren't being Mm. validated people think you're nuts that you're like why are you just it's the the note you made too that that you were going to talk about how and and validating yourself as well and that yeah yeah, validating your own emotions as well. Because I think the the biggest piece um, that I went through when I was going through my depressive episode is that um, my my theory of like, okay, well, normally I'm vibrating up here and now mm. I'm down here. I was like, normal people are vibrating down here just on an emotional level and are now having a depressive episode on here. So I'm saying, was my depressive episode, and I'm saying here and you're listening to on the fucking podcast, you can't see my hand. <laughs> Midpoint. Like, midpoint. Yeah, midpoint. Like, was my de- because my depressive episode was just lower than what my high vibe is, and it's higher than most people's low depression. Was my depression not depression then? Like, that was what I was questioning mm-hmm. myself. Like, is if my depression wasn't as bad as other people's depression, then was it really depression? Mm-hmm. And I, thankfully, I had a, a friend that was like, it's still fucking depression. Yeah. And I was like, ha, huh, that's interesting. Cause I was denying myself those emotions and basically saying it wasn't that bad and wasn't all of these things when she was saying, if you felt that bad for that long and it wasn't normal, that's depression. Yeah. If you didn't, yeah. yeah. And I was like, okay, so I needed to validate the way I was feeling. And I feel like this is what a lot of people do. They go, other people have it worse than me. Yeah. It's not that yeah. bad. Even if yeah. they're feeling fucking shit other people have got a bet worse than me or they say mm. that there there are bigger problems like I don't have a reason to feel like this I my life is perfect mm. I don't have a reason to feel depressed I don't have a death or a um a breakup or anything like that I don't have mm. any of these reasons these proper reasons so it's confusing so and other people have it worse than me so I I can't speak up I can't say it I can't validate my emotions because I don't have a reason to feel like this. And that's Mm. fucking bullshit. You don't need a reason. Sometimes you just feel that way. And there's multitudes of Mm. deeper connect things that why that could be happening. And we've spoken Mm. on some of them. Another, some of them is that, that there is trauma that lives in your body. And we will get into that in another episode. But I think the main thing here is that, especially if you think you cannot speak to someone uh, about this because they won't get it a friend a family a co-worker there are places that you can literally phone safe, up yeah safe places and they understand because they deal with this all the time they get it mm-hmm. they get it they they know what to ask you they know mm-hmm. what to say they know how to help you how to support you and all you need to do is phone them and they will support you mm-hmm. because the reason they know that the reason you're phoning them is because of a mental health mm-hmm. um, challenge that you're currently having and they will lead you through it and they will hold yeah. your hand and they will take mm-hmm. you there. So Maddie, go ahead. She's going to mention a couple of these places that we've either had, um, we know about and that are quite great in New Zealand. Um, but we will say, if you're listening, I know there's people listening from Australia and Long term, there'll be global people. There are places that will help. There are helplines, yeah. and yeah, just contact a helpline. So mm. go ahead, Maddie. Cool. And the other thing too is, even for my <clears throat> anxious, my very anxious baddies out there, like you don't even have to call some of these places. You can text. So oh, you, cool. you you can you can just you know um, as soon as that emotion hits, don't even worry about the anxiety of having to call. You can text. But all right, so. There's a few different ones, um, and I'm just gonna read. I'm just gonna read a few, but um, we'll put we'll put a, a longer list in in the yeah, thing. Sure um, nice. But we've got like the de- the depression helpline, which is o eight hundred one 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 seven five seven, or free text to four two zero two, um, and this is a place where you will speak to trained counselors, and they're there to ask you how you're thinking, how you're feeling, and to Uh, move through those emotions in the moment with you um and then obviously for our um our tamariki or just our younger listeners there is youth line and that's 0800 376 
633 or you can text 234 for support um and those are ones obviously yep you can text or call um and it's incredible how many new um even just apps are coming out that you can go on google play or the app store and um and grab these and um again we'll add more but these are just some that really stuck out to me which is one is called triple p so this is online parenting support including triple p Teen Triple P and Fearless Triple P designed to help parents support their children and teenagers to cope with life's ups and downs, promote well-being and to make Fano life feel more enjoyable. Um, and obviously it's very important that um, we make note um, for our for Tane mental health. Um, and there is an incredible new... Um, Tane means... Tane is, is men men yeah. males um so there is um I, i'm I, I could be wrong I can't, i'm pretty sure it's within new zealand but it's um the she's not your rehab um that mm. that brand that organization um just in the last few days i believe they have uh released an app an app called the inner boy which offers a safe space where men can uh, explore their emotions and access a range of supportive tools insights and resources and um you know again I guess being um a woman and just being who I am expressing my emotions comes very easy to me but it's obviously very well known that um our men can struggle with that and um those safe spaces and having other other men to go to is so hugely important so yeah, yeah um check out that new app called um the inner boy um which has come from she's not our rehab so yeah that's just a few um there's also that better help now i know better help is one that is global um I, that is it's a paid a paid thing but there <clears> is <throat> you can get access instantly to uh, qualified um counselors yeah, they just um, link you up with a, a counselor or yeah, someone to support and, you with your specific needs yeah and if you don't like them you can just request another one that, yeah you know, bye yeah and which is really helpful that is really helpful <clears throat> so again for those that are more global or sort of uh, not in new zealand um i know that that is one um and we'll I think probably that's a, just a side tangent there um maddie i know because that's a huge conversation that we can't get into now because we actually need to stop because this is getting along but <clears throat> as we that, do that, as we do um <clears throat> and now my throat chakra as well um but essentially that whole thing about finding a, a counselor for you mm. and finding that person if it doesn't work out guys move on go to the yeah. new one don't stop don't quit because the, it's it's guaranteed generally that you're going to need to like just like a, going to a doctor mm. you're going to go to a doctor that doctor's an idiot don't like them get a new doctor mm. same with a counselor go to a counselor or psychologist if they don't mm. work out they're not getting you you're not vibing with them get a mm. new one yeah just it's get just a not new your one. person like you yeah. need to find the right one you need to keep yeah. going and going like okay cool it's not a case of like oh I tried and I tried counseling as a general thing mm -hmm. and you know it was shit like yes there's probably going to be shit counselors out there and or maybe not shit counselors there's probably stories of that but it's probably more that that counselor yeah. didn't um you didn't align with what the way they yeah. think they did they didn't have practices mm. and tools that aligned with you guys didn't vibe you mm. didn't vibe and you need to find mm. someone else that's better suited for you so you just need to carry that journey on mm. and just go okay cool try that person didn't work mm. out let me try a new person trust yourself um, and trust yeah, what just, you need yeah. yeah and and but keep going to find that that right support person for you um because I, I know for a fact that when you can find that person that that can help you it's it's fucking life-changing mm. so keep going on that journey and keep and, finding the sorry place. last side note <clears throat> sometimes that person is you sometimes that person <laughs> is you. you know like you you again the biggest thing is that you have to get good with you and yes we've got these support networks and we've got these things but ultimately it comes back to you and how you love yourself and how you love your life and how you take care of you um and building those routines out of the things that bring you joy and bring you mm. peace is so fucking important you are your biggest Number asset, priority your biggest priority so love yourself as much as you can and continue to learn to love yourself even more love yourself more than anyone else be obsessed yes. obsess with yourself because 
yes. you've got one body, one mind for this lifetime anyway. And yeah, um, it's important that you live it to the your fullest. Fullest, yeah. Fullest. Like find mm. grasp that fullest because that's what this life's about. And and you know, if you you can't find those places, just ask Maddie and I, we can help. And mm. um, you know, I mean we can help in the sense of directing you to the places yeah. and, and helping you, but we want this to be a space where you can come to us. Like we want to be that mm. conscious, safe space where we get mm. to hold space for you. So um, if you need help with direction on where to go or what to do or anything like that come to us message yeah. us tag us tell us um and we can either direct you to the places we can can help or maybe mm. we've got experiences that we can share with you i know mm. um maddie's also got intuitive sessions that she can mm. help you through at the moment um so that's that'll be really helpful mm. as well if if that's more spiritual side of things yeah. but um i think that's that's gonna be us on this this episode yeah. like it's, I think it's been so. a fucking journey <laughs> <laughs> yeah absolutely and and like you said you know it's just it's such a big topic and you know we can keep revisiting this every couple of months and we can just keep re-upping yeah, and we do and we need sharing. to we need to touch on it um we've got all the time in the world and we'll just keep going we'll keep going yeah so, um and we've we've implemented a new thing for our podcast as well guys like we i figured out that you can do polls as well so uh, you know, like, like we've said before, share with a friend, if you think this is going to resonate with them, if it's going to help them um, share it along, especially mm. something like this, which is so fucking huge. If you think it's going to help someone, please share it. And that's not for us to get well-known and all that trash. Like we genuinely here to get this message out there. So if you, if you believe mm. it's going to help someone just share it with them so that they can have a listen um, we will be posting all of those things in the show notes as well as yeah. the stuff to Mel Robbins and Brene Brown um, and a couple of other things if I don't know how much we can tag but we'll try <laughs> yeah we should try get she's um, she's not your rehab because that's a it's a beautiful one yeah we we'll, we'll tag yeah. that um, she's not your rehab because that's a New Zealand based thing as well um, so I think at this stage you can also rate this episode if you like I don't know if that'll help um, we're going to implement this on all our episodes but there's only it's five you, there's no there's no one to five you must rate a five <laughs> yeah rate the podcast five but you can rate the podcast five stars but yeah. rate you can rate the episode by letting us know if yeah. it's like yeah. excellent which is like fuck yeah i'd, I'd send this to I a friend yeah i love this shit like frothing um mm. then there's like an in-between average like you guys need to check your shit like be you better to, be better like this is the kind of like you're not quite there yet yeah. google this concept more do some more yeah. research nicole <clears throat> yeah um <laughs> And then like so, it should be me. Me needs to do more research. Yeah, you Maddie, do your fucking <laughs> you do research. Enough. <laughs> and then um uh the third option is like this is crap, this is poor, this is like shit, yeah. just like meh. This is meh. Yeah. Just tell us, guys, like we're here to improve. Yeah, well, whatever, yeah. but like just rate it excellent though. Just like <laughs> But we're here to prove, we're here to grow. Um, yeah. So yeah, that'll be fun, I think, just to see what you guys are thinking and feeling about our episodes specifically. And we can see also what kinds of help themes. You. And we can see the themes and the concepts that you really want to hear about as well, mm. if those are the things that you love. So, and we can keep doing more of that kind of stuff. But I think what we're going to do now is we're going to go out with a bang and 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 sing our little song again. Hey, Maddie, we want to do that. Yeah. We just do the same um the same we can do verse. the end i've got the lyrics but you, you? Just, you'll have to do the first one because i don't know that <clears throat> you're gonna see it's our destiny so i'm 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 just gonna i'm leaving that that line to you what are we on the same one i've got the one there is a thing i wouldn't do for you and um, the second at verse. the end oh the second one. Oh, okay yeah okay. just the second one not the third one Okay. Okay. Do you want to start? <clears throat> yep. Are we doing the two times you've got friend in me? Yeah. Okay. So you All go right. first, I go, and then I'll go. Okay. Here we go. You've got a friend in me. You got a friend in me. You've got troubles. I've got them too. There isn't a th anything that I wouldn't do for you. We stick together and we see it through. Cause you've got a friend in me. Yeah, you've got a friend in me. <laughs> 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 <laughs>
do do do. <laughs> lovely. Love it. Love it. Fucking love it. Okay. Bye, peeps. Love you so much. Um, Ciao. Speak, see you next week. <laughs> How do I stop recording? <laughs> Please hold while we figure out how to stop recording. <laughs> I'll just keep dancing for you. Because you've got a friend in me. <laughs>